Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So I often get asked, how do you transition from one type of material to another? So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So come and join me and I'll show you how. So for tools today, we're going to be using our chain nose pliers and our bent chain nose pliers. We'll also be needing a pair of sharp scissors. We may use a Sharpie a little bit later on. We'll be using some GS Hypo glue and a pair of these long tweezers and one of our barrel knot tubes. And for supplies, we're going to be using some Eslon cording. I've got this nice gorgeous agate and another Tibetan style agate a little uh, rhinestone spacer, and this nice little pendant that's kind of got a unique stamping on it. And then the other side, it has sort of a cross, so you know you can have it, have it either way. I've got our findings that I'm gonna use at the end. Some six aught seed beads, some uh, six millimeter matte wood beads, and some two millimeter leather cording. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take two ends of my cording and I've taken my two meter piece and I have cut it in half so I've got two one meter pieces of Eslon cording. So I'm going to find the middle, just run those down and then I just pull it down like that. So now I'm going to make a knot in it and I'm going to do my pearl knotting technique where I go around my finger and pull that through and I'm creating a knot on my finger. Now I'm going to take my tweezers and put them right on top of there. So that's where I'm going to be dropping my knot. So I'm going to pull nice and snug. Now if you can see there's a couple pieces that are not cooperating, they haven't gone all the way through, so I just take each piece and pull it nice and snug, making sure that that knot, there we go, that just makes it nice and tight. And then I'm going to pull that out and run my tweezers down. Okay, so now we have our first knot on there. Now I'm going to place my little agate piece on there. Now when you're putting four pieces of Eslon through any stone, you may have some problems. So the way that beads are drilled out is you'll find that one side is always a little bit easier to get through than the other side. So if you're trying to get these through and you're really struggling, turn your bead over, you'll find that it might be a bit easier. Next comes our little uh, rhinestone spacer. And then finally our big juicy egg nugget here. Okay, so there we go. Just make sure that's pulled down there nice and snug. And now I'm going to create another knot. So again, I'm going to go around my fingers, drop that off to the side, pull that through. So I'm creating a knot on my fingers. I take my tweezers. Now don't use tweezers like I have. We do sell these for about $3.99, I believe. This is a pair that was sitting around the back that I grabbed that have a bent end. They don't work so well, so I'm kind of uh, you know, having a bit of a trouble <laughs> with them while I'm doing this. Uh, but uh, the ones you would get would, of course, not have that. They've been used for a million things that they shouldn't be, and that's what happened to them. Okay, so I come through my knot, place the tweezers right where I want them, grab those ends, pull up, and make sure that they all come up at the same time. And if you have any that aren't, you can just kind of pull them singularly and ha have that nice and tight. Now I'm going to remove the ends and then run my down there, so make that nice and snug. So now you can see that's all knotted in there nicely. So now what I have to do is I have to split these into two groups. So what I try to do is find the natural placement of them. Like those two look like they should be on the right hand side and those two should look like they go over on the left hand side. It's not imperative, but I just find that it's one more thing that helps everything go the right way directionally. So on one side, I am going to place six of my six aught seed beads. And on the other, I'm going to place six of the six aught seed beads. So let me just get these on here and then I'll be right back. All right, so I have six of my six aught seed beads on each side. So now I'm going to bring all four pieces together and I'm going to put the final seed bead on top there and I'm going to run all of those through that one and that's just going to help kind of anchor that all in there and I'm just going to pull that down and now we've created the beginning of our little necklace so now what I have to do is tie another knot so I'm going to go around my fingers make a little knot take my tweezers go through that knot 
and go right above. You can see I'm pushing down that size six seed bead there because I wanna have that nice and snug. So I push down first and then I'm gonna drop that off. You wanna make sure that it's always staying on your pair of tweezers. If it falls off, then you're not gonna have a knot. So I just pull up, making sure that these are all nice and snug. And then I pull that out take my tweezers and run down. And I will link the other uh, video that I have where I show how to do this a little more in depth. All right, so now I've split my uh, pieces in two again, and I just try to find the ones that look like they should naturally be on that side. So my pattern's gonna be a seed bead, and then one of my wood beads, and then a seed bead and a wood bead, and I'm gonna complete that on both sides and then I'm gonna come back and show you how to finish off this beautiful necklace. So now wood beads can be a little bit unpredictable because they are all hand drilled. So I am finding it a bit challenging on this strand for some reason. So in your kit, I'm also gonna include one of these um, big eye needles and then you just pop your um, cording through the end of it. I've had one drop out, so let's find those two ends and I'll show you what I do. So just take your two ends, I would have them evened up this has a collapsible eye, so that's why they work really nicely. So you just pop it through the end and then just sort of fold it over, put it through your bead and give it a pull and then it goes through there so much easier. So I will make sure to include that in this kit um, and then you won't be cursing my name when you're <laughs> trying to load these beads on there. So an easier way is just kind of stack them all up and it'll go a whole lot faster. So that's another little tip that I can give you. Okay, so changing to that needle method made life a whole lot easier. So I do recommend trying to use a collapsible eye needle. So we're gonna put this aside for now and I'm gonna start working on the leather. So I have about a meter of two millimeter leather. You will not need that much unless you want it a really long necklace. So we will make sure to provide just enough in there for you so that you can um, you know, make this the length that you want. So I'm just folding that in half find the halfway point and give that a trim with my scissors. So on one end, we're gonna create a barrel knot. So I'm gonna turn that back about two inches or so. And I'm going to place my tube in the middle and I'm gonna be working towards my left hand. So I'm gonna bring it down underneath and go around towards my left hand. And I'm gonna go three times around. Then I'm gonna take the end, put it through the back side of the tube and you will get one of these tubes in your kit. Pull that through and I'm still holding on to that knot so it doesn't go where I don't want it to go. So now I'm gonna sort of push it up. And then before I tighten this up, I wanna make sure that this loop is as big as I want it. And I don't want a very big loop. I want it about that size. So I get it to where I want it. And then I'm gonna push. I sort of hold on to this and then I'm pushing that really tight. I want this barrel knot to be super, super tight. So I'm pulling it quite tight. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off the short one. Make sure you're trimming short and not long. So I sort of isolate that one and then I'm going to cut that off. And now I'm going to repeat with the other piece of leather. So I'll show you one more time. So I have my long piece on top. I turn it back about two inches and then I'm going to take my barrel knot tube and place it in between. So I've got my short one on the bottom get this all situated here. <laughs> so a short one on the bottom and the long one on the, on the top. And I'm gonna start working towards my left hand. I'm gonna go once, twice, three times. And you can see my knots are a knot on top of each other. They're just going nicely and neatly up to the words to the left. Come through the back end, pull that through, pull that out. And I'm gonna start tightening that up, but I wanna make sure that I make this the size that I want it first. So I wanna make it the same as the other one. So about that size. And then now I'm gonna start tightening up my knot. So those are about the same, yeah. It's really, I think on this one, it's important that they are the same size. So you can guide that by putting your fingers on either side there. Get it nice and snug. Really make sure that's nice and tight. And then you can isolate that one and then trim. Now, I don't like that little bit of um, leather that you see there, just the cut, because these are dyed leathers, and I don't like that you can see that. So we're just gonna take a little Sharpie, just a little trick. If you have one of those pens for your wood tables that's maybe a mahogany color or something like that, or uh, walnut would be actually per uh, perfect for this. 
So nobody's ever going to know that you took a Sharpie, but now you can see that that just blends right in. So there's another little trick. Okay, so now I need to attach my Eslon to my leather. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to split these apart and I'm going to go through the whole of this leather loop that I made going opposite directions. I'm going to bring one in from the left and then one in from the right. So they're going opposite directions. You can see there. And then I'm going to pull. And that will pull that down. And you want to make sure that everything's nice and tight. Now what I'm going to do is make a knot on the bottom. So I'm going to start my knot and it's just a regular knot here. And I'm going to tie it so that it goes underneath the leather. So it's a little bit probably hard to see there I would think. But I'm creating it underneath the leather. So I'm just going to do that and I'm going to tie another one in the same spot. Now I'm going to flip it over and tie a knot on the other side. So I have to bring this one underneath and around and then I tie that and I'm just going to sort of flip that a bit so that the knot actually goes where I want it to go. So it's a little, you have to sort of finesse it into place. Make sure it's not tangled up in your seed bead at all. And There we go, just get that nice and snugly tied. And then I'm going to create one more knot. And this is just to secure that onto that leather. So now I'm going to bring that down at the bottom of the leather. Probably easier if you do it beforehand, but you know it's hard to uh, videotape and remember all these things and <laughs> at the same time. Okay, so now I'm going to trim this off. And I'm going to just trim it down to about an eighth of an inch on either side. So now there's a couple ways that you can finish that off. You can take your thread zapper if you happen to have one of those, get it nice and hot, wait until it's firing red up there, and now you can come in on the end and just melt that down and then push that in. That'll be perfect. So you can do that or you can take a little bit of GS Hypo glue. I'll show you what you can so if you don't have one of those, you can do glue. So we'll just take a little dab of glue and just place it right over top of where you cut that off. So either one will work. I probably prefer the thread zapper, but if you don't have one, glue works fine. Just kind of go in on both sides and give that a little bit of um, you know, support there. So I'm just going to repeat that on the other side. So I'm just going to come in on either side, going opposite directions. Pull that down. Now this time I'm going to make sure it's at the bottom to make my life a little bit easier. There we go. So I want to have it sort of centered like that. And now I'm going to tie some knots. So tie this one underneath the leather. There we go. That's centered in there. That's exactly what we want there. Again, sometimes when I'm filming and trying to remember what I'm doing and <laughs> all those things, it doesn't always go according to plan. But you know, as long as you get the gist of what to do, just take your time when you're making it and make sure that it's you know going where you want. So then I did another knot. Now I'm going to flip it over, and I have to pull this one out so it's going the right direction. And now I'm going to make a knot on the other side. So just, I just make sure that it's where I want it before I pull tight because once you've pulled on a knot, it's hard to do, you know, to pull it back. So there we go. That one worked out perfect. A little better than the other side, but it still ended up looking the same. It just, you know, was a little futzier to get in there. And then I'm going to do my second knot. Now, if you wanted and you had some small seed beads, you could trim this off and maybe do a little decorative thing. But I wanted a nice, you know, neat look on this one today. So trim those down and then I'm going to use the thread zapper. So you want to make sure if you use the thread zapper that you are isolating that so that it doesn't go where you don't want. See, so you just kind of push it down and then it disappears. That's what I like about this. If you are brave, you could use a lighter, but uh, I'm not, so I won't. <laughs> and this one's sort of sticking out 
little too close to my original work so I want to make sure it's not going to um, I'm not going to be zapping it in the wrong place so by using this it burns it down and it sort of mushrooms it out so it's not going to fall out there all right so that's what you want it's kind of a nice little just a little knotted look okay so now we've got our little uh, transitions from our eslon to our cording done so I want to sort of match these up and then I'm going to run them down and I'm going to trim them off because now you can see with my barrel knots they didn't exactly end up the same. This is also the point that you want to measure and decide what length you want. I am going to trim off just a little bit of this because I'm thinking that it's a bit too long. Um, but again, that's going to be a personal preference for everybody. So it's your piece, you decide how long you want it. So I have these really great um, crimpable end caps that I'm going to use. So what you want to do is you want to find the natural flow of the leather. So you see how it's wanting to go this way. I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to place my little crimpable end cap on. And I want to make sure that it's lined up so that it's the loop is going this way. So I guess horizontally. So you can see the leather there. So what I do is I take my pliers, place it in the middle section, pull back, and then I give it a crimp. I don't want to see the leather poking out, but I don't want it to be too far down that it doesn't catch. So I give it a crimp down there, and then I turn it over, and I give it another crimp. And you can go back and forth, you know, maybe once or twice. You don't want to do it too much because it is soft. It could break through. Um, you never want to crimp on top of these pieces, just the one in the midsection that doesn't have the little stars on them. So again, I find the natural flow of the leather, place my ends on, line it up horizontally, Make sure I can just barely see that leather poking through there. Pull back a bit and then give it a, a little smush. Smush is a technical term, you know. So now we're just going to add our jump rings on the end and then we're almost done. So I'm going to use my pliers, open up my jump ring, come in on the end there and I'm going to add my lobster clasp. And you can add whatever you like on a necklace like this. I just wanted to keep it simple. So we're using a lobster clasp. And then on this end, I'm going to do a jump ring. And then I'm going to use a closed ring. I always like a closed ring when I'm using a, a lobster clasp like that. It makes it easier to do up. So there you go. There's our completed piece. I hope you enjoyed watching how I went from one kind of jewelry material to another. I often like to use different materials in my necklaces and my jewelry pieces. I think it makes for a more interesting piece. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to leave me a comment and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, this one will be available in a kit on my website. You just go down to the description box below this video and you click on the link and it takes you directly to my site. I want to thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Um, <laughs> Who am I? What am, where am I from? What am I doing? Why am I here? 25 after 6, I should be asleep, but I'm never sleeping, so I'll just film all the time. <laughs> From Kelly's beer. <laughs> My name is Fred Flintstone, and I work in a rock quarry. No. <laughs> no, I haven't been drinking. <laughs> Good enough! <laughs>